Um, I had two questions. Uh, one of them was regard regarding your characterization of the left as fascist. You mentioned that, uh, that there's essentially an unbroken lineage between the modern leftists and then their grandparents back in the 1968 revolution. Yes. But I, I'd like, looking at where they came from, they were screaming Marx now and Marx Hughes in the streets in right. 1968. Right. Marx Hughes was one of the cultural Marxists in Frankfurt School. Right. Um, they were coming up with deconstructionist theories how to tear apart the West. Right, no, I'm, I'm more of the Frankfurt School, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then back to Gramsci, basically back to the Bolshevik revolution. That's right. Why not? Uh, I mean, it sort of muddles the issue calling them fascists and then saying that Nazis are, you know, gay liberals in BSDM costumes. If I, if well, I mean, I, I've never said I that particularly, so that's weird. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, and, you know, but, but the, the, okay, so number one, the Nazis were of the left. The Nazis were of the left. And, and, I mean, if you read Hitler's books, and what you, if you read Mein Kampf, what you find is that he was very heavily influenced by Marx. Right? The, the, the split between the National Socialists and the Communists was a split over power, not over fundamental principle. And the fact is that the Communists were fascists. I mean, Stalin was a fascist. I mean, fascist was a system of government that suggested that a top-down elite ought to rule every aspect of life. And the economic system that has been traditionally attached to that is one that involves seizure of private property and redistribution of it, which is something that both Hitler and, 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 uh, and Stalin did. So there, there is a, a high correlation between the left of today and the fascist left of today and the fascist left of yesteryear. I don't, I don't draw a massive distinction, really, ideologically, between Nazism and communism because they, they both have the same source. It's just that the Nazis tended toward nationalism and the communists tended toward internationalism. This was their main conflict. Uh, and then one other question. Essentially, the, the, the point of this lecture was you know, the diversity and its aspects, but you regarded it mostly as neutral for most of the lecture. You're more concerned with, with its character, which, which I, I think is, is good. But uh, I would submit Putnam and uh, Robert Putnam and Arthur Schleisinger in The Disuniting of America, yep. a hostility of one tribe for another is among the most instinctive human reactions. Mass migrations have produced mass antagonism since the beginning of time. Right. Uh, Schleisinger, uh, Looking at the list of the most trusting places, Putnam, or sorry, Putnam. Sorry, no, I mean, I, I know the Putnam argument. So I know where, and, 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 and the Putnam argument, essentially, and he, he's made this argument now. Putnam's a leftist, by the way, Robert Putnam. And, he, and, he, and he's very upset with the idea. He wanted to go with the diversity as our strength argument, but it turned out that in many cases, diversity was not our strength when there was diversity of values. There are three types of diversity I really only talked about two. I talked about diversity of thought, right, and I talked about diversity of race. Right, diversity of ethnicity. There's a third type of diversity that's slightly deeper, and that's diversity of values. Within diversity of thought, there can be disagreements, right? But at the very end, as I suggested, there are certain values we all have to hold in common, right? And those values that we have to hold in common are deep and abiding and cross-racial or can be cross-racial. So what Putnam found in, in that same book that you're talking about and, and when he studied this issue, what he says is racial diversity without any other, without any, any other driving factor all it does is create more protest marches and interracial conflict. The, the, the exception to this is when people have a common goal in a community, which is why we have to have social fabric. It's why we all have to agree on basic values like freedom of speech, like basic decency, like don't knock some girl up and run away, like make sure that you pay for things, like my, you know, taking care of my wife is my business and taking care of your wife is essentially your business. Right? We have to agree on values. If you do that, then racial diversity is a neutral. It doesn't make a difference at all because racial diversity has not been, once, you, once you don't have diversity of deep values, and we all have the same values, who cares what it's, the color your skin is? The problem with diversity is when there is a diversity of value systems entirely. And even the left agrees with this, by the way. The left, for example, wouldn't suggest that a community is made richer by a group of people who come in and then suggest, for example, that they get to just kill everyone. Right? This, is not, this is not a community that's been made richer by a diversity of values. So the solution is, so, so racial diversity, correlates with conflict when there is no commonality of values. The solution that I have suggested and the traditionally American solution is that we need commonality of values and unity of values and then racial, and then racial diversity becomes a neutral.